Well, we're here. After, Socially, we're here. After a very, uh, you know, interesting day. <laughs> Mike? Okay. Let's, let's, let's paint this picture well, here. I'm, I'm, Mike has a job. Mm-hmm. It is not as a sports reporter. No. Mike has a big boy job. And usually Mike and I record at like 4.30 p.m.? 5. 5 p.m. Because yeah. Mike's office is like across the street from where we record. Yeah, it's like a block and a half away, basically. Yeah, yeah. so it's pretty easy. He comes over after work. He goes in early in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, we're buzzing. <laughs> 5.45 p.m. I'm like, where are you? Like, yeah. what what is happening here? Had a so- meeting go late. <laughs> A meeting because you have a big boy job, mm-hmm. and you know. Look, it's meetings. it's it's, cor- it, it's it's the corporate lifestyle, you know. Um, but it was tough to get any work done today because, obviously, of what happened yesterday. Um, it was craziness. We saw the degeneration of a like an old man just losing his mind, and I, of course, I'm talking about the NFL trade deadline. Yes. In which Jerry Jones traded a fourth round pick for, can you name the player he traded a fourth round pick for? Jonathan Mingo. Yeah. Most people probably couldn't because no one knows who the heck Jonathan Mingo is. Noted Carolina Panther. Very good team. Not even, not a Carolina Panther anymore. No. Dallas Cowboy. Um, How about that? Yeah, he traded for a wide receiver whilst mm -hmm. not having a quarterback. So I want to, like, to start this off, I promise there's a reason why I bring up the Cowboys. I want to start this off, and we usually have a thing. We obviously, you and I are based in Toronto. How about right? that, Cowboys? And we go, okay. And the Cowboys are kind of like the Leafs of the NHL, or the Leafs are kind of like the Cowboys of, of the NHL. Not even kind of. Absolutely. They are, because they, they both don't win anything, and yet they're huge brands that are recognized across the world and get all the media coverage. Um, and are also, like, super rich, and yet things always... And say, could you imagine if the Leafs... Had, like, Jerry Jones is Harold Ballard. Yeah, definitely. It, like, <laughs> he he bought a team and made himself the GM. Yeah. Like, he's playing be a GM. Oh, yeah. He's, he's literally playing Madden. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. Kind of amazing. So, in, uh, an ESPN article came out. I think it was two weeks ago. I wanted to talk about this, but we I wanted to... We love ESPN. To, yes. But I wanted to give... Yes, we do. But I wanted to give something... I wanted to give it a little bit of time to rest because I'm like, okay, if the Cowboys start to suck more than they already were, then this will hit a lot harder. This will confirm my narrative. And thankfully, my narrative has been confirmed. Hashtag confirmed? Hashtag confirmed. Ooh. So, and by everyone's narrative. An ESPN article came out two weeks ago that the Cowboys, their big thing, and I believe it generates $10 million a year in revenue total, is that they, they hold tours of their facility. Yes. All the time. Yes. That's huge. However, those tours are the most in-depth tours in pro sports. They're vi- I've been on that tour. Mm-hmm. It is incredible. And so they do a f- it is worth every penny. However, they do it during the day. Right. So, the article was essentially a bunch of current and former players, some anonymous, some not, going this sucks because we will imagine you're at your office <laughs> and you're trying to get like an expense report done. And there's just random people on the street watching you fr- out, like from a couple steps back of your, uh, uh, of you know, of your cubicle or whatever. And, and they're also giving you their opinion on mm-hmm. your expense report. Or let's say you're at the gym. You yeah. want to work out. Yeah. And there's just a lineup of gawking people taking pictures of you and looking at you like you're in a zoo. <laughs> you're, you're a zoo animal. It's great. Like in the article. You're a polar bear. Exactly. A panda. In the article, it was saying that, like, meetings are going on. Yeah. And so, like, teams have to, are, are, like, worried, or, or not teams, like, like uh, personnel in that, in, in, in that facility are, like, worried that the public is going to, like, hear their, their, like, strategy meetings because they're, like, outside the door of the film room. Yeah. And, or, like, for example, there was a time, there was a Micah Parsons you know, great player for the Dallas Cowboys. He's their best player. Their best player. He was, him and C.D. Lamb, they're both, you know, like, in the mix. But, you know, he, he, was, he was hurt last game, 
and he's going through his rehab, and these people are just watching him. Like, they, they'll they know if he's playing or not just by watching him like that. Like, it's it's crazy, and it's impacting the way that people are able to do their business or able to, to you know, sort of be – like, this doesn't happen anywhere. You know what anywhere. I love is, like, the Dallas Cowboys, literally the Dallas Cowboys, mm-hmm. allow this, which is – it's a little far. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's a little too much. Meanwhile, in hockey – it's like if you even walk within 10 steps of the Maple Leafs locker room, they have to like call the bomb squad. So, like the, the Dallas Cowboys will allow you to walk through player meetings. Meanwhile, if mm-hmm. you and I are friends, worse than having the nuclear codes. Yeah, like, like I am. It is absolutely wild to me. Like hockey people act as if, number one, they're as big as football, which like. They're not. You're not. And number two, like. You're not holding anything here that's, like, crazy pants. Like, every, there's only a certain amount of four checks. And there's a certain amount of penalty kills. Mm-hmm. But in football, there's a ton of different plays you can yeah. run and, like, everything. So the Cowboys are cool with, and they probably shouldn't be, letting people, like, walk through their meetings. In hockey, like, you even step, like, by the Leafs dressing room and security is all over the place. So that was the whole reason I brought this up in the sense of being, like, in another edition of can you... Imagine if the Leafs. <laughs> it wouldn't it's, it's It's Canada's favorite favorite game show, Imagine If the Leafs. But the Leafs have started allowing tours. They're going to, but they will not be like this. But I think, like, this is a team that has that has not won uh, a Super Bowl since the 90s. Obviously, the Leafs have, like, 30 years on that or whatever. I was going to say, since a, the, the day I was born. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're 28 years old. It's a lot. So you're almost 20. Like, we're getting up to we're almost be being 29. We're going to be 29 in two months. Exactly. So it's like that, that is. Damn, only, I'm going to be 29 in two yeah, months. It's Jesus. almost 30 years. That's a long, long drought. When and, you're the te- richest team, yeah. And you're the richest team and you would wonder why like you what? are allowing this distraction. Why are you opening yourself up to this nonsense? Because like. But we are talking about a guy who did the draft from his yacht. Yeah, but, but that's, honestly, that's kind of baller. Like. Because he did no, the draft. But, uh, what I'm saying is, is like with that level of behavior, like, are we even surprised that he doesn't understand? But this is the thing, okay, with owners, right? I've dealt with them in ver- in sports. Like, they are not clued in to the impact that this may have on players. Now, it just so happens that this guy is also the GM of the mm-hmm. team, and so it's not ideal if your GM is not clued in to the impact that this could have on your team because he's thinking about it from an owner money-making perspective, but also not ideal when your GM is going on radio once a week and cussing people out and threatening to fire them from radio stations. So again, I say, imagine if the Leafs. Like it's... Like what if Bradtree Living just went on TSN and like threatened to fire O-Dog? Like, just imagine that for a sec. If that, like... (laughs) If that it would hasn't make happened, great radio. if that hasn't happened by now, like the only time, like, like that, yeah, if it hasn't happened by now, it's never gonna happen. Like, but I just think like the Leafs are so uptight with this kind of stuff. They like you're not even allowed to take a photo in the dressing room after a game. Like I remember back, no. when, like they had the belt, and I remember when Ilya Samsonov was liked by the Leafs uh, fan base instead of despised. Um, and he, this was like right in the peak, you know, have some smile uh, era of him, and. He had the belt and, it, and he, you know, and he was holding it and he was smiling and he had a great game. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take a picture. So I took a picture and I asked one of the PR guys after like, hey, you know, like I took a picture of, of Elia. Like, and by the way, he's not next to his locker. He's not next to like a board filled with, you know, like filled with. There's nothing n- happening. Neutral zone trap stuff. No. Or system stuff. No, it's just it's him. In, like in the locker room, but just standing in front of a TV that has a bunch of Leafs logos on it as like a backdrop. And I'm like, hey, like this would be a fun post. It's it's showing him he's having fun. Like, would we'll be able to post it? And he made me like take my phone out and like delete it. Be- like that. That's how locked down the Leafs are with this kind of stuff. Just the sure. Cowboys are basically letting every like you know will basically let your stepdad walk in the middle of of their their offensive scheme meeting <laughs> or their quarterback <laughs> meeting or their scout team meeting and just like. Listen. Yeah. What is stopping teams? From just sending... Like, if you're... 
uh, Andy Andy McCabe, who used to be the director of the FBI, used this analogy for a political mm. thing. But like, if you're the Giants, the Eagles, like a a mm-hmm. whatever, you know what I mean, like a, a divisional rival, and you're not sending somebody in, mm-hmm. that's negligence. However, that's literally negligence for any intelligence. It, like, however, it's not like you need to commit, you know, or, or subterfuge to beat the the Cowboys these days. But, yeah. So like. Let, let's hold off on that. But it, it it's just, I saw, I read that story and I compare things, like, I just think, man, imagine if the Leafs, like imagine if any of that happened. Because we talk about things that are distractions. Like we talk about Mitch Marner doing commercials as a distraction. This is a next stuff level like, distraction. And stuff like that. This is literally like, they're, they're, Jerry Jones is allowing like his team meetings to be interrupted. He was allowing his players preparation, their injury rehab, their training to be interrupted by the fans. And he wonders why they don't win. He's literally putting money over team success. Like that that we talk about that all the time with the Leafs. Like oh they don't they don't care what happens as long as they sell they sell out their games and they have a huge like, you know, uh rights deal and blah 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 blah. This is we're literally seeing an owner here put <laughs> who actually team does not care. <laughs> value 10 million dollars in surplus revenue and ancillary revenue over potentially breaking a, also, a Super like, Bowl curse. This is a drop in the bucket. Like the the Cowboys if they won a Super Bowl would sell far more than 10 million dollars in merchandise. Ever every time Jerry Jones unzips his zipper and takes his a golden and zipper. takes a Morse a Morse code sounding piss because his <laughs> prostate's probably not doing great. He pisses ten ten million dollars. This guy literally pisses hundies. Yeah, he goes. I'm like, oh, okay. The Germans are advancing. All right, you know that kind of thing. No offense, um, but uh, it like it's just it. it blo- That's like a dark turn very it quickly. Bogg- <laughs> the Germans are advancing. Uh, it boggles my mind. That, that, that this is allowed to happen, and so I just go back to thinking, like, imagine if the Leafs they don't do anything, so they're going to start allowing like tours on Only off on, days, yeah, through like the the, but they're not going to like take them to like the cold tub, and they're not going <laughs> to or like you know the the player sauna, and they're just going to be like, hey, this is the locker room, and this you, is where Austin Matthews sits. Cool, want to take a picture? Cool, okay. and don't step on the logo. Yeah, that should be on the. They ceiling. cover the Leafs are at least smart. They cover it with a with a carpet. Like they put a blue carpet over it. Yeah, yeah. And and so like, not so we can't. The, Just the, put it on the goddamn. The ceiling. Panthers were ridiculous. Okay, like because I remember being being there two years ago for the Cup final. The Panthers logo is fucking huge. No, it's massive. And it is, and their locker room is not big, so it is impossible not to step on that logo. Like literally impossible. And what are they gonna do? Revoke your credentials? Like no, like yeah. I, I traveled here. Like I. I yeah. You know, like, I'm, you're, not, you're not revoking my credentials because... I as, stepped on a plastic logo. As I was trying to get to one of the 15 scrums happening at the same time, I'm not... I, I accidentally put, like, part of my heel on, like, the outer mane of the panther that's, like, it, ridiculous. But it, this it's, it's just nuts to me. Logos on ceilings. Don't allow fans yeah. in your offensive scheme meetings. Like, you... what What's crazy to me, too, is just, like... Just hold these like really early in the morning or hold these at a time where players are not there all the time or hold them only at the practice facility or hold like don't I don't understand. Don't allow them to walk through the meeting room. Yeah. Like like you can go through the gym, but you can't go through the medical facility and you can go through the locker room as long as no one's getting changed. You shouldn't be allowed to go through the gym if there are players in there. No, but that's what I mean. If no players in there, like anywhere where they're actually working except on the field. Mm-hmm. You should not be... So if they're in the locker room, if they're in the gym, if they're getting treatment, mm-hmm. if they're in the sauna, cold tub, like any of that crap, you can't go in there. I'm sorry. Yeah. And you know what? You could sell it differently. You could have a premier tour, which are evening tours when they're not there. Mm-hmm. Or you can have the regular tour and yeah, you may or may not see X, Y, Z. Exactly. Know. But like the it's, it's silliness. So, Rachel. Yeah. Is your Bluetooth turned on on your laptop? Yes. Okay. So, I I have a game that I want to play with you. I'm already terrified. It is called Guess the Coach. The NA- NHL 25, the video game. Okay. For the first time since, I think it's 2003, I believe. Maybe even earlier than that. They added an update to the game. Um, that is monumental. 
and it is that they have added the likeness of coaches to the game. This is not going to go For well. the longest time, they're, like the head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs in NHL, whatever, has been like Jim Block, and it's just a standard looking white guy, mm-hmm. or it's been one of it's been a, it's been a basically like an AI generated person. Okay. Because because I'm assuming the game did not have the rights with the NHL Coaches Association to use the coaches' likenesses. Right. But this is and this happened so long in in Madden too, like. Like, even when you did have coaches, Belichick refused to participate. So it would be everyone's coach, and then it would be like, Tim Johnson is the coach of the Patriots. Bob you know. Balloon. <laughs> and it's pretty cool because they they have, like, they have like uh, attributes and system stuff that's, like, you know, like, t- you know, uh, uh, assigned to the coach. It's great. However, the likenesses are maybe not the best. Oh, no. So I want you. I'm going to airdrop stuff to your computer. Okay. That's why I wanted the, to turn on. I'm going to airdrop stuff to your computer, and I want you to see if you can tell me who the coach is. I will send these pictures to, to our producers so we can put them on the screen as they're coming up. Oh, I think you could just airdrop it to my phone. Oh, I'll airdrop it to your phone. Even even better. All right. So the first I'm one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to drop the first one, and this will look a lot better because at least the picture will be next to your head or something. But this is going to be great. So the first one, this is the first one here. It's airdropping it to you. I promise it is not a pic. <sighs> It is not. I can tell. Who do you think that is? Rod Brindamore? It is. Yo, let's go. Great job. All right. Nailed it. Now, obviously, some of these have, like, team logos and stuff in front of them, this so it might not be. Though. Not That was a good guess. You know, honestly, you know how I figured it out? Cheekbone. Yeah. <laughs> Mine was Widow's Peak. That, too. Who is this coach? Martin St. Louis. Yeah. Hair. But that is. I want to see. Not great. Yeah. I might be able to try and edit this one so at least you, there isn't too many team logos in front of because this is one of the more egregious ones that I'm about to send you. This one I cannot believe was, was like approved. Okay. Because, like, even this Martin St. Louis one, like, why does he have Rod Brindamore's body? It's a good question. Like, first of all, he's not that tall, like, he's famously short. And why are his eyes, like, a centimeter apart? Okay. This next one's going to blow your mind. Okay. I want you to try and guess who this is. Uh. Who do you think that uh, is? Don Granato? Nope. He doesn't even coach anymore. He's not even a coach anymore. Who do you think that is? Uh. I can't. That's First of all, what's with the sunglasses? Good question. That's uh, a coach that's coaching behind an NHL bench. Uh, Could have fooled me. Do you want me to? Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. That's Lindy Ruff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that no. Is, that is that is Lindell. Lindelham Ruff. I don't okay. know what his real name. Okay, okay. First of all, we we need now we need a review of this. Mm-hmm. The glasses. Okay. Um, this man has not had a dark beard since you and I have been watching Hawk. Mm-hmm. He is all white haired. That's it. Way too much hair on the top of his head. And what is happening with the sunglasses? Yeah. Does Lin- does, maybe Lindy Ruff wears like tinted glasses now. Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't watch every Buffalo Sabres Okay, game. but like these are sunglasses. Yes. Like, They look sorry. like normal sunglasses. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Yep. Coming your way. Who is this coach? Uh... I'm going to take a stab in the dark here mm-hmm. and say Chris Knobloch. It is Chris Knobloch. All Correct. Right. I believe you're two for three, which I'm, is very good. I'm three for four. Three for oh, sorry, four. three for four, which is a lot better than I thought you were going to be in this Okay. I, have, I only have a couple more. Don't worry. I, I love this. Who is this coach? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> um... Wow, that's okay. So bald head, mm-hmm. there, it can only be one of a few. 
If that's Spencer Carberry, it's Spencer Carberry. That's, you're doing a lot better at this game. No, than this is me. unacceptable. The only reason I knew that is because of the bald head. Mm. Otherwise, I would have no idea. I would have no idea. That looks nothing like him. Who allowed this? First of all, again, why is he as big as Rod Brindamore? That's a good question. He's not that. Spencer Carberry has like very, like. He's, he's a very slender man. Slender, but like he's built well. He's he's cut, I'd say. Yes, he's yeah. cut. He's not a bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have two more. It's the second last one. Okay. Who is this coach? Uh, I have absolutely no idea. Take a guess. Craig Berube? It's Craig Berube. You're five for six. That is supposed that's to. That's Craig Berube. That is Craig Berube. The last one is by far my favorite, though. So that's Craig Berube. No, okay, first of all, no. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's not Craig Berube, but. What is happening here? First of all, he's way too happy in this photo. <laughs> Out. Yeah. The body dimensions. Okay. Better. The head, though. The head's insane. Okay, so just to, like for everyone listening, Craig Berube has got a pretty round head. He's a he's got a big head, like yeah, he does. Yeah, like pretty round he's head. He's got a noggin. This guy looks like a like a square head. Yeah. Like he looks like a kraut. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know what that means, he looks like a German. Um, that this is absolutely incorrect. No. I see. Say- honestly, the gray hair and the fact that you hadn't brought up a Leafs coach yet was the only. Mm-hmm. The only reason there. Now, this last one, I saved the best for last. Oh, dear. And I'd be very impressed if you were able to get this one. Okay. Who is this coach? Uh, <laughs> I got absolutely nothing for that. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm glad you didn't put Rick Talkin in here because I did see that mm-hmm. one, and that one is an they, ab- yeah. abomination. I would, I would literally, like, I would call the people who made that game be like, what did I do to you? Like, I'd be like, do you, the thing is, do is we like, have a problem? Like, what is... Rick talk it would do that. Yeah. Um, who do you think it is? Okay, so... I cannot wait to tell you. Who has white hair? Like, is... It, okay, so it's... Here, let's go with who it's not. It's not Rick Tockett. No. It's not Chris Knobloch. No. It's not... Berube. It's Berube, not... Uh, Martin St. Louis. It's not Carberry. Travis Green. It's not Alain Vigneault. I completely forgot Travis Green is still a, is a head coach again. Alain Vigneault is not a head coach, coach. again. Um, this is an NHL head coach. A current NHL head coach. Okay, so it's not Sullivan. Nope. It's not Torts. It's not Warsawski. It's I, I literally have... Rachel? Is it Dave Haxtell? No, it's not Dave Haxtell. He's also not coach co- coaching right now. He got fired. Oh, right. He did get fired. Rachel? Yeah. That is John Tortorella. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that is, Yo, that is John Tortorella. He's rocking up at EA headquarters. First of all. That is John Tortorella. No, it absolutely isn't. That is he Jonathan. Is far too happy. Jonathan H. Tortorella. He is far too happy. He has way too much hair. The, this guy's hair is far too gray. Uh, he's not frowning enough. Like, John Tortorella has very pronounced frown lines. Mm-hmm. And this... I'm sorry. This is... You were so adamant that it wasn't torts either. It was like not... It, it was like, well, it's not torts. Like, it, no, it's absolutely not torts. I mean, it's not, but it Here's is. Here's the thing, is like... And you would only know this given how often I've seen torts working in the league. Mm-hmm. The cowlick isn't correct. Yep. Like, the hair is literally not correct. Incorrect. No, this is not torts. I don't know who this is, but it's not torts. So, try again. And eh, wrong. So, who's worse, that one or Talk It? Talk It might be worse because they gave him a black beard. And I'm like, that's not... Like. I'd say Talk It's because they gave him a lazy eye, too. Like, they have, he has an eye that looks kind of lazy. Yep. Like, that's, like, that seems personal to me. Like, that's, like, if some, literally, if I was talking, I'd be, like, did I, like, did I piss you off to the people who made this game? Like, what did I do to you? You know? Maybe he beat somebody up. Maybe. It's a good question. Or, it's a good point. Maybe he owes someone a gambling debt or something. I don't know. But, uh, that is absolutely insane. I I saw those, and, like, the first thought was, like, this is podcast material. This (laughs) needs to be spoken about. 
because what the heck? Okay, now, so try again. Ugh, man. Eh, wrong. You the know what? The only one that's like remotely acceptable in that entire one was Rod. Really? Yeah. Because it didn't even like look. But I also like. I know my NHL coaches, so, Mm -hmm. like, I would know, like, but if you're looking at this and you just catch a glimpse, no one first of all, the Torts one is... Torts one is insane. An abomination. That's why I saved it for last. Like, it doesn't even come close. Even the Barube one is, like, okay. But here's the thing. Here's what's great about this is a lot of NHL coaches now used to be players. And because of the progression of time, a lot of NHL coaches right now used to be players who actually... We're still we're playing during EA during the EA Sports era. Rick Tockett being one of Rick them. Rick Tockett, Rod Brindamore, etc. They look better. Martin Saint Louis. Martin Saint Louis, exactly. I scored so many goals in NHL 04 with him. They look better in those games than they do like as yeah. players than they do as coaches in NHL 25. That's not great. It boggles my mind. I do want to give credit though. To the game because the whole thing, the thing that's really annoyed me about the NHL games and why, you know, I'm basically not playing it anymore is that it has n- nuked realism. Well, like the racism is also Well, not the racism is bad, but, but you, you have to go online to do that. Like, oh, okay. I'm talking about like, if I'm, if I want to create like Mike Stevens, the hotshot prospect who, you know, and get drafted and do be a pro or whatever, like... If I score a goal, I don't want to then have a custom emote where the whole crowd goes black and I like turn to the camera and do like a pose, which is what you do now if you score. That's not something it that would sucks. ever happen. Could you imagine the cultural uproar in the NHL if that happened? Well, there would have to be like a reckoning, au- audio and visual synchronization with that. Like you'd have to have the arena crew dim the lights every time someone scored and put a spotlight on the person, like it's stuff like that. When no, but I, just imagine the cultural, like... Oh, I know, I know. Don't say... Like, imagine going to Lou well, look Lamorello. What, look, what, look, what, look what Nail Yakupov did. Remember? Yeah. That, that Sally? Like, he... I think he... I don't even think Slid he won. on his knees in the Like, ice. literally the entire length of the ice. That is basically what you do, except with, like, a full head-on shot whenever you score a goal. But just imagine going sucks. to Lou Lamorello and being like, this is what we're doing. He'd be yeah. like... No. He'd be like, no, it's not. <laughs> You're fired. Yeah, exactly. But it's... Like when I play the game like that, I want to pretend like I'm an NHL player. Like I'm an NHL player. Like I want to like get into a fantasy world where I am this hotshot prospect who got drafted by whatever team, and now I'm tearing it up. And they like the That's NHL game. Not the case. And it's just not the case. But it's a fantasy that I want to. Per- I, I pay. I pay eighty dollars to indulge this fantasy whenever I want. Jeez. It's a lot of money now these days. And what they've done is they've stripped away a lot of the. They've turned it into like Fortnite. Like it's. This, however... I refuse to play Fortnite. This, however, adds to the realism, and I like it. Okay. As much as the coaches' likenesses suck and are literally enough to laugh at... Attempt was made. They've at, Because nothing takes you out of, of the realism more than when you're in NHL... Like, when you're playing the game, like, for, for example, be a pro, um, where you are, like, the player, and... It'll be after a game and your coach will call you into the off into his office and they have like a sort of uh, like you you can the coach will be talking to you and it's like all right so I'm 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 in I got drafted by the I don't know like Vegas Golden Knights or whatever and their coach so I'm being traded Jim <laughs> Thompson or whatever is chewing me up I'm like no I want Bruce Cassidy to tell me like yeah. to go myself in his office like you know I want I and, want torts but like not that torts exactly. actual torts and so. I like this, but the likenesses are hilarious. Oh yeah! Like we, how have we? How has this happened? We have you seen? Just scan their faces. Like, what I, are you doing here? I understand that, like, it takes effort and money to put, like, to put stuff like this together. But, I, man. I get it, but like, I'm not sure if you've seen graphics of video games lately. Like, it is like we've reached a peak where that they looks almost like World can't of Warcraft get better. In like 2002, yeah. or like RuneScape. Like we've reached, we've reached a peak of graphics now. I think we're like because when video games used to come out, it used they used to be sold on the thing of like oh new improved graphics. Like these these graphics are crazy. We've reached a point where like you cannot notice now if they improve them because they are already so good. Yeah, like I my friend plays Assassin's Creed a lot, mm-hmm. and I know the new Black Ops just came out, and Black Ops was one of the only video games I ever played. Mm-hmm. Um, like Nuketown and yeah. Rust and whatever. Like. 
the graphics in that game, I'm like... They're flawless. You could literally be in the war. Mm -hmm. And, like... So, you look at that... Which is probably why we have a bunch of people running around in public thinking Mm -hmm. that they're, like, actual army people and they're dressing up wearing camo and god knows what because they're playing these realistic video games okay i'm not in the i'm not (laughs) in the mindset that video games cause this it doesn't like no i'm saying like you can it's easier to you know how people do cosplay like the anime and like deer and whatever now we have people cosplaying Mm -hmm. that and it's like but i think you actually look like you in the game but i i like i i don't understand how we have graphics like that and then for and and I get you have to do a one year turnaround or whatever, but like, what is happening? here? Come on, like that that like when when NHL 06 with Rod Brindamore in it looks better than as a coach. Like let's let's be real. Um, speaking of of things that are not looking great, National Predators. They're not. Looking they're great. they're stinking. They're pooping and stinking. Um, Barry Trot said they might have to bring out the rebuild plan. So uh, let me yeah let me, the let me R word. Let me ask. <laughs> It's a sin in hockey to use that word. I don't think he used the R word we're thinking of. We're using the hockey R word. Yeah. Because um, that's basically like a... It's honestly, like, if you say that it's word... It's a slur. In, in, in Vancouver, if we uttered the word rebuild, like, we would... Ha- it would be a problem. So... You can't use the word. It is like saying Lord Voldemort. So that is clearly not the case in, in Nashville. Nashville. Because... The the Preds are four seven and two, start the year. Not great. Not great. They they lost their first four games, so at least they've kind of clawed some things back. Um, but this is a team that committed a hundred and twenty million dollars in long term salary over the course of the se- of the offseason. Yeah, they to signed... Brady Shea, Stephen Samkos, and Jonathan Marsh. Exactly. They committed a lot of money to these guys. And, uh, and the thing about all three of those dudes is that they are old. <laughs> They're all old. Like, it's... the thing, And, like, don't get me wrong. Good hockey players. But what are... First of all, Roman Yossi has seven points in 12 games. Six points, actually, I believe. They don't have a single player on their roster who is over a point per game. Or even at a point per game. Not, not a player! Who is at that threshold. It's not good. Their team save percentage at 5 on 5 Mm -hmm. is 885. So now remind me. Did they just re-sign UC Saros? Yes. However, I'm not going to lay all of this at the feet of him. No, definitely not. Because they have an expected goals at 5 on 5 of 46%. For context, the Sharks are 44 they have a goals for per 60 rate of less than 30%. That's the not Sharks good. are 39%. They are worse than the Sharks. Holy guacamole. Now, so, obviously there's expected goals and mm. they're so they're also shooting 4%, which is not Yeah, the same. that's that's going to However, bump up. their offense like their offense, so they're like Production is dead last in the league in almost every category. They're worse than the Sharks. They're worse than the Flyers. They're worse than the Blue Jackets. Like, they are unfathomably bad. Do they have a worse power play than the Leafs, though? Honestly, didn't check that. And probably not after last night. Yes. But, quite frankly, like, then I went to against, what are they giving up? Bottom five in the league, every category. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay. it. They're not getting unlucky. They're bad offensively and defensively. Mm-hmm. And if you're bad on both sides of the puck i am not willing to blame your goalie at that point because odds are he might be the only guy stopping you from getting blown out every night so i ask like what do they do you can't because i don't care how much barry trotz wants to throw this word around you literally can't rebuild well okay so you could find a team for uc sorrows should he wave because people would want uc sorrows even with that term yes absolutely yeah, okay 100 percent Philip Forsberg is a very easily tradable asset. Oh, yeah, definitely. So is Roman Yossi. So is Roman Yossi, but I don't think that's So happening. would Brady... I, uh, no, actually, no, Brady no. Shea. Brady Shea wouldn't. No. No. Maybe Jonathan Marsh so, though. I think Jonathan Marsh is tradable. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think Ryan Steven, O'Reilly still has some value. S- has a lot of value. Yeah, he had a phenomenal it, year last year. Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, Gust- Gustav Nyquist has he- a ton of value still. Yeah. I mean, honestly, Steven Stamkos is a ton of value. Yeah. But, like... He probably has a no-move clause, but... He does. Yeah. The thing is, is, like, oof, uh, that's not... Like, you just traded a scar off. You can't trade Soros now. Mm-hmm. You, you trade a scar off because you extended Soros. Yeah. Like, is that... Was that... <sighs> a mistake? Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, but like, was that there... Obviously, it's not everything to do with, with what they... No, you should have gone with a scar off. But that was their folly, because... They've done this. It's, you know, it's like what the Packers have had with quarterbacks for so long. Rene. Rene, Saros. then Saros. Yeah. And they moved and like, they obviously Rene retired, but like they, they, you know, like they, they, they didn't just hang on to him or whatever. Like for, you know. He was still good. He was still good, but also like they, they, you know, let that run its course. Yeah. And then Saros stepped up. And Same with the Rangers. You go from Mike Richter to Henrik Lundqvist. Mm-hmm. To Igor Shosturkin. Yeah. Please screw off. Exactly. Like, <laughs> it's the same, you know, like the, like the Green Bay Packers. They went from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love, you know, like. So annoying. It's great. It's annoying. Um, and so they, the Preds broke the chain. Yeah. They even, even before that, they went from Thomas Volkun to Pecorine <laughs> to, uh, to UC and, Soros. Like, good Thomas Volkun. Yeah. To UC Soros. And then they drafted the, him 15th overall for a reason. Yeah. In, in Askarov. And they gave up. Now, now to be fair, Askarov is in the AHL right now. He's killing in the AHL, but he is in the AHL. He, he is by far the best goalie in the AHL. He wasn't able to, to crack the Sharks out of camp. I, you know what? I actually think Mike Greer and his staff deserve some credit. Mm-hmm. Because they have an understanding. I remember working with Mike Greer in New Jersey. They have an understanding of like... It's one thing to give young players like Smith and Celebrini and Bordalo and um, Henry mm-hmm. Thrun like opportunities, but when you you're a young team that's bad mm-hmm. and you thrust a twenty year old goalie in there, you could do a lot of damage. Definitely, like a lot. Oh, of you can damage. you can ruin it like completely. I, Askarov is clearly the best Sharks goaltender in that organization. Mm-hmm. He's better than their NHL goaltenders. Oh, definitely. He is absolutely. Yeah, their NHL goaltenders is headlined by like Vitek Vanacek. Yeah. He is better. Yes. But his development and ability to play in meaningful games and build confidence. And be good. And in those be games. good, not get shelled every night, is more important than the Sharks winning games this year. Definitely. So, yeah, he's not in the in the uh, AHL because he that's where he deserves to be. He's in the AHL because they don't want to ruin his development. And the whole like, point you, of that. You're telling me he wouldn't be better than Stuart Skinner right now? No, he'd be better than, like, a lot of goalies. Like, like, what are we doing here? However, it's just a shame that the Predators couldn't have worked this better. Because this is now the second time, and obviously, like, we're gonna... This is the second similar type of trade that they've made. They felt like they had a surplus and they've traded from it. And obviously now we look at Seth Jones and we think this guy, you know, he, he's... He's not a great defenseman, but there was a point in time for right. years where Seth Jones was an unbelievable defenseman. There's a reason why. There was a point in time where their top four was Roman Yossi, Matthias, Matthias Ekholm, Ekholm, Ryan Ellis, and Seth Jones. Yes. and then like, That was the best top four in the league. Absolutely. But they, they felt like they had a surplus on D. And they definitely kept the right one out of those four. Definitely. <laughs> but they, they felt like they had a surplus and they traded Seth Jones uh, to Columbus for Ryan Johansson. Yikes. Um, to be fair, they went to the cup final. Columbus did not. Right. So good for them. But I find that Nashville does – it's almost like they don't like having an embarrassment of riches in some way. Yeah, like, like just be elite. Like just – what? Like, like your whole thing, Nashville, is that you're the defense team. Like yeah. you churn out – Them in Minnesota. Yeah, like you churn out – Great, uh, great defenseman, and you always have. That's your thing. Them in Anaheim. So, like, and, and your whole thing is, like, you can defend like crazy, and you'll probably win a 2-1 game. That worked pretty well for the Devils during a time, obviously, where, like, like the style of NHL play facilitated that. But like, <laughs> That's certainly helpful when you have Scott Niedermeyer, Ken Danico, and like Martin I, Broder. I get that... Scott Stevens. <laughs> yes. I get... 
Brian Rafalski as well. Jesus. I get that you don't want to fracture relationships and that you need to make sort of like chemistry work and that t- player morale is important. But this is a 20, 21 year old kid. Yeah. Without arbitration rights, who's not an, on an expiring deal, who even then will be a restricted free agent. And you should not be able to get bullied. Like th- those are in place. So you are not allowed to get bullied by this player. Right. And but you also could have handled his development better. Like you could have definitely this, this year. What they could have done is did what the, they did with like I believe the last few years with Pecarine, which is first of all, there's no need for UC Saros to be playing 65, 70 no, games. Split them. Do all, the all Mark Swimming thing for three years. One plays forty seven, the other plays what, uh, like thirty five. Yeah. Right. Now. Like, you shouldn't have had, like, and, and this kid was going, I won't report to the AHL. That's okay, what he was cool. Saying. You can play 35 games here. Or even, but if you were intent on sending to the AHL, then you go, okay, then you won't play. Like, you're going to, you're going to burn your age 21 season. Yeah. Because you won't, you won't want to be, you won't be, you won't want to be. Like, he one, absolutely would have played in the AHL. What are we talking and about? And also, like, here? you, you, you want to burn your age 21 season because you don't want to be one hamstring tweak away from being our starter. Like, yeah. if, like if, 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 like they, they also like, they let Kevin Lankin and go to Vancouver, to Vancouver because they were like, all right, our duo is going to be Saros and Askarov. Yeah. And, and Kevin Lankin is now the starter in Vancouver because Thatcher Demko is, mm-hmm. uh, having some issues. We'll put, we'll, and we'll but leave like, that there. But this is like, it, this just could have been handled so much better, I think. And I think it was a miscalculation by both Askarov and by the Preds. Definitely. But it but like but the thing is, Askarov, like, you're allowed to miscalculate because you don't have the power. Yeah. You can be you pissed want. off as much as you want. You can you can hum and haw and say I'm gonna play here, I'm gonna play there, whatever, all you want. But like at the end of the day, you don't have a choice. Yeah, it's like when you're sitting at the dinner table and you're like, I'm gonna have ice cream for dessert, and your parents are like, actually you're gonna finish your green beans and you're Or like, else you're not allowed to leave the table. You can go like <laughs> yeah. like you cannot eat the green beans, it's fine, but you're still gonna be at the table. Like <laughs> your booty is Eventually in you're that gonna chair. miss out on birthday parties, you're gonna miss out on play dates, you're gonna miss out on school. Like, you know, you're gonna start You're not gonna be able to watch TV. You're gonna start feeling consequences. Like that's what this that's what this guy's doing. Consequences. And so you can't like, like this, that, that just, an, that's what kind of annoys me about this. It's just like, dude, you like, what are you doing? Uh, but, but it annoys me. Like, it's fine. Like Iskara, because if you want to, if you want to advocate for yourself as, as, especially as a worker, I, I implore that. But it's, it's also the Preds right to be like, no, too but, bad. Yeah. And the Preds, like you, the system is rigged in your favor. Yeah. Use it, it. Like, so why are you kowtowing to the. To the the demands of a twenty one year old who yes has played very well in the HL but like is not better than your starting goaltender is not better than your starting goaltender right now and he's gonna say oh there's no clear path ahead of me dude things change all the time Pecker or not Pecarina UC Saros could like we're, we're seeing that he's he's got like a the he's team's faltering he could also have a Thatcher Demko situation he could have a hip issue he's a goalie they get hurt dude. People like people falter and move on from players all the time. Pierre Luc Dubois Oof. signed an eight year deal to be like the stalwart number two center and, and like one of the top offensive players in LA. He's not on LA anymore. And it's like a calendar year later. Like it's like things change. Things happen. So I get that you're annoyed that there's no clear path to you being the number one starter. Also, very there are very very rarely are there ever number one starters in the NHL anymore. Almost every team has a tandem. The only, the only, and and if you don't have a tandem, then you have a high quality backup. Like Igor Shosturkin still has Jonathan, Jonathan Quick, you know, stuff like that. So it's it's yeah, like Jacob Markstrom has Dustin Wolf. Yes, right. The only one that is like okay, Jake Ottinger has Scott well, Wendell. well, not anymore. Like Jacob Markstrom doesn't have Dustin Wolf anymore. <laughs> oh right, sorry. Yes. Um, yeah, last year he had mm. Dustin Wolf. Um, but did Dustin Wolf go like screw you? I'm not. I'm not going to the AHL no. until. And Dustin Wolf. I don't won- think Linus Hallmark and Jeremy Swimming did that. No, either. but also like, did Dustin Wolf go like screw you? I'm not going to go in the. Dude, Dustin Wolf won won the goalie of the year in the HL two years in a row. Like, like he's you know like we talked about the best goalie in the AHL. That would be Dustin Wolf if 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 he if he hadn't graduated by now, and he graduated because he bu- he 
bided his time, and eventually either the team went in a different direction or, or you know, the play like went in a different direction. Ilya Sorokin has Semyon Varlamov. Yeah. Like, Ilya Sorokin is in the Vesna conversation every year. Ilya Sorokin's like a top four goalie in the league. Maybe right, there's top really three. only a couple. Like, Andre Vasilevsky has Eunice Johansson. That's not great. Mm-hmm. Jake Andre has Scott Wedgwood. That's also Scott Wedgwood's not, still a pretty good backup. But I like he's him. Not like, no, no, but he's not like Jonathan not Quick, an, like all that yeah. good stuff. Yeah. There's always going to be... Yo, jo, like, the Leafs just signed Joseph Old with a three-year deal worth, at the time, more money than he is worth. Like, yeah. like he he's... He's played 60 games or something and was hurt when they needed him the most. And even to even still, like, he started this year and now Anthony Stolarz is very clearly the starter right now. And it's crazy because, like, that could end up being a... That's going to be a tandem. Mm-hmm. Like, Craig Berube said it. He's not just going to ride a guy. No. Like, it's going to be a tandem. That could end up being one of the best goalie tandems in the league. Absolutely. And va- and Askarov, like, that could have been you. Also, like, Pekarine, like, he's getting up there, man. He's, he's almost 30. <laughs> No, like, Soros. Or sorry, I keep getting these two. So frickin- Soros, Askarov, easily would have been the best goalie tandem in the league. Absolutely. Easily. And like, I get, like, I get you're like, oh, this guy just signed an eight year deal and blah, blah, blah. But like, dude, like, like, like he's, a, he's a workhorse goaltender who's about to hit 30. Like his hamstrings are like, and his gonna snap. And his hips and his back. Yeah. Like, like it's, it. he's going to get hurt. And then he's one breakaway stretch away and then you become the Corey Schneider to his Roberto Luongo. Hey. Like, like you know, like this, this, like power moves all the time. So I don't get it. The Sharks now have a fun, not, probably the best goalie prospect there is right now. Oh, ab- by far. Is, do you think better than Wallstat? Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, That's the only one who can really compete, right? So. I don't even consider Jesper Wallstat a prospect anymore because he's with Minnesota. Yeah, okay. Like, he's in the NHL. But he's but and like, he played last year like a lot, like he's co- overcome the cusp of like that's an NHL goaltender. To yeah, me. but but like there's st- it's still it's Gustafson and and Flurry. Like if we were going into the playoffs now, that would be the two guys. Like, I don't necessarily think they play for really Flurry in the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. I think it would be Volstead. I think mm, they'd roll three. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, that's a long winded. And Volstead wave. is the best of the three. Like obviously, Mark Andre mm-hmm. Flurry has the best career of it, but like. Yeah, I'm not necessarily certain that they would play Flurry. Um, yeah, it's there. wild. Anyway, Rachel, we are going to end this off with a lifeline. Oh. Now I have, okay, I have two. Can't one, wait. One is more, um, and obviously our lifeline is we go to either am I the asshole or uh, relationship advice, which is a p- presenting a sort of... A but if you want us to do yours, you can email pucksocialpod at gmail.com. Yeah. And we will leave names out and... We will feature you on here. So I'm not sure which one I, I like because I know you want me to do an am I the one, but I, I I pulled up a relationship advice a while back. I'm not sure. Do you want me to do both or do you want to We're do doing both? Okay. Now what? I, now I pulled this one up because I know that you know our producer Connor, the lovely human being. I love this guy um, a ton. We've worked with him both in a corporate setting and obviously with our podcast. Um, I know he's not a big he's not a big fan of like profanity or like toilet humor. No, so I picked he's this not. one just for him. Okay. This is relationship advice. It goes, my 23 female, so the person who's posting this is 20, 23 and female. Boyfriend is 20, 24 male. Sends Snapchats of his ball sack to a couple of his male friends. He also receives photos of theirs too. Is this odd? I will clarify that it's never the shaft, so to speak. Literally just a close-up of his testicles. He says it's a running joke that every now and then out of... All the Snapchats they get from each other, you never know if you're going to get hit with a nutsack. (laughs) They exchange a lot of regular Snapchats, so it's not like this happens constantly. But occasionally, someone will flashbang someone with a nutsack. So is this... Why are we talking about this? Is is this normal behavior? I wouldn't ever imagine doing something like that with my friends. He's He's very obviously a straight man, but this strikes me as strange. That... Is hilarious, in my opinion. Very obviously, a straight man is doing a no, lot no, of work that, there. I I don't do this with my friends, but that is something I would absolutely do with my friends to mess with them. Actually, you know what? I'll tell you. I'll like I'll tell you a similar thing that I do with that I, that I do with people. There's a photo of a hockey Twitter person. I'll show I'll, I'll show it to you I, after. I, yes. Um, a shirtless photo, yeah. near selfie, that was posted at in 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 the sense of like. You're calling me a beta male? Like, would a beta male look like this kind of thing? 
And like, I will text my friends. Yes. <laughs> like within like, like, you know, in like intervals of like three months, just randomly middle of the night, middle of the day, whenever I'll be That's like, That's funny though. And I'll just be like, yo, this sounds like it's happening. I'll be a like, I'll be like, yo, that. yo, I just heard some crazy shit that went down like with the Leafs after the game. Like I have some information. Like, do you want to, do you want to have it? He's like, yeah, sure. Like, tell me. And I'll just send that picture. See, but that's like a once every, like, first of all, that's also not you. And they're, they're all like, God damn it. Like, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Is it bad that the first thing that I thought about when you read that was like, I'm going to put my nutsack on, on your, your drum set. set. <laughs> you know, like this is, and it's, it's, it's just a very close up picture. Like, so you, it's almost like you can't even tell that it is a nutsack. Okay. But, the imagery of this is not you know, something I need. Um, that's odd behavior. <laughs> Because it sounds like this is happening. On this a- is the male and female, um, like, this is where our cultural differences, so, or gender differences. Yeah, because this sounds like it's happening. All- like, I don't... Sound- no, no, it's every once in a while. Like, it's not constantly. It's like, they, they Snapchat chat each other constantly, and then, like, every once in a while, one guy will be I like... I want to know how often every once in a while is. Okay, well, it's not saying every... It's because not saying. this is odd behavior. Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying to think of the female I think it's funny. equivalent I love it. of this, and I I can't. No, because because you guys, you know, this is this is quintessential. Because we're, we're not. This is quintessential male humor because we like pranking. We like pranking each other. We like doing like, you know, it, it's it's all about that. There used to be a game called Sneaky Nuts in in my school where like a guy like what where a guy like on picture day guy in the back would see if he can get it so like. So he can see if anyone would notice that he would have his nuts out in the back of the, the school picture. I, okay. You know, like, this is the stuff that guys do, okay? I, I, this is, I, this is guys being dudes. I don't even have, wow. Um, yeah, so okay. I know, I know Connor would love that one. I just, I could Trying to process what like I prefaced, you just said. I preface that because I, I just I can picture the text I'm getting from him after like when he's editing, being like, come on, man. Like and <laughs> like I just know. Chat? Yeah. It's like, okay, really? So this is yeah, this is where our our uh, gender differences, I guess. Yeah, no, not acceptable. I think it's hilarious. Go for it, man. Yeah. Sneaky nuts your friends. Now this is an I am am I the I one. This is what we'll end on. A-I-T-A. A-I-T-A. A-I-T-A, am I for doing weird slash awkward poses whenever my mother-in-law accidentally walks in on me in the bathroom? (laughs) (laughs) What? Lot going on here. Lot going on here on this one. Immediately? Okay. I'm dying. So, so my mother-in-law, and keep in mind the person's posting this, she makes it clear, I'm a girl too, by the way. So, came- Okay, thank God, because like- Yeah, came to stay with us for a few weeks till her home is renovated for Christmas. How old is this- uh, she doesn't say her age, but I'm, I'm just going to assume married, she's like, probably in our 30s. she's married. Yeah. Okay. There, the problem is that she has been randomly walking in on me when I'm in the bathroom. Thankfully, not once has she seen me naked because I started picking up on her behavior after the second time in a week. She'd barge in, then turn and say, oh, sorry, then close the door. I tried talking to my husband about it, but he kept ignoring me and then flat out said, so what if she ac- accidentally sees you naked? She's family. Uh, we have a lock and I could, I could have used it, but I have past trauma from the idea of locking slash being locked in a room after my brother locked me in the bathroom when I was five. So I came up with this idea. I'd go inside the bathroom pretending to use it and wait for her to come. Cause honestly it's deliberate at this point. When she accidentally barges in, she'd see me in a weird slash awkward position. For example, doing a ballet stand, standing on the toilet, or standing facing the wall with my hands up, fully clothed, of course. I can see how awkward and weird this would be for her because she'd stand there for a few seconds trying to figure out what I was doing. It was hilarious at first seeing her initial confusion, but she told my husband about it, claiming she's caught me practicing rituals in the bathroom. Practicing rituals in the bathroom? What is this, a seance? I cleared things up and revealed the reason why. My husband was livid. He called me childish and said that I made his mom feel terrified slash weirded out by my behavior. He said I should have acted maturely and locked the damn door instead of playing mind games. Am I the asshole? Okay. Not an asshole by any stretch of the imagination, but also I agree with the husband's sentiment of lock the door. Grow up. So she has she has trauma. I guess. I get it, but if you're in a public bathroom, you're telling me you should not locking the door? I, that's a good point, actually. But I guess it's different, like, because if you're in a... Ah, uh, you know, that's no. that's true. If it's a single-use bathroom, you're right. That's what i I wonder saying. what you... Maybe she just doesn't use public bathrooms. Like, maybe she's one of those people who, like, can only go home. Okay. 
But even then, like, you're staying at a you're staying at a friend's house. You just not lock the door. You're in a hotel. I guess it's different because it's not a bathroom. Like you don't maybe you don't lock the door in a bathroom, but or in, in a bathroom at a hotel. But it's no okay. I'm sorry. I understand the childhood trauma part because I have trauma yeah. like that I deal with. Hey man, we all have trauma. Exactly. So I'm I'm not being unempathetic towards that. Mm-hmm. But if it bothers you so much that you're scheming up a plan to strike poses, lock the door, man. You know what you should. And also, hang on a minute. This is the part that I don't agree mm-hmm. with at all. What? She's going in there, not even going to the bathroom. She's just going in there to be a head. Yeah, but in which case, fuck you. But no, but it's because her mom or because her mother in law is deliberately then walking in on her. Then just go to like the to bathroom try and, when you need to go to the bathroom. Or like to try and embarrass her. So she's like, all right, fine, I'm gonna catch her and like yeah, mess with her. The, what I'm saying is, it's like, you know what this all could have been fixed with? A like a do not disturb thing you put on the door handle. <laughs> Very easily. Because then you have the plausible deniability of like, like, you know, you why didn't you lock it? it? Well, the freaking thing was on the door. Like, why isn't she reading that? I, if I, I wouldn't do the poses. Every time she would walk in, I would, I would have my back turned pretending like I'm like masturbating furiously. That's what I would do. Michael! Because that, because that would, I, I guarantee you the first time she does that, <laughs> she's not it. coming back in after <laughs> that. No, you're not seeing anything because my back is turned. But. But like she would walk in and I, and I. And I wouldn't act embarrassed. I'd just turn around with a wry smile. That's and <laughs> and after that, she would Jeez. not. There's not a second. There's not a chance she would come back for seconds after that. No, there's no chance. But all I'm saying is, is yeah, the walking in part is weird. I would address it with her personally. Why are you only addressing? That's a good question. Why are you only addressing it with your like? Why is your husband the middleman? Why are just you address not addressing with your mother? Yeah. Why are you not going up to her and be like, hey, what's going on here? Can you Cut please not? Can you please not do that? Because or can your we? Your mother-in-law is the asshole in this situation. Oh, absolutely, like, she's the asshole. Like I think she's honestly what totally within her rights to mess with her mother-in-law after this. In my opinion, oh, I, totally within her rights. Okay, so here's here's where I stand on this in the hierarchy of nonsense. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mother-in-law at the top. Yeah. This is unacceptable behavior. Mm-hmm. It's not permitted. We're not ridiculous. Y- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. It's got to stop. Yes. You, you know better. Yes. You, you have to know. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. The first step is address it with her. Pull her aside quietly. Don't embarrass her. Pull her aside. Hey, I'm uncomfortable with this. I don't lock the door. Here's why. Mm-hmm. Can you just, if you see the door is closed, yeah. knock. Mm-hmm. If you don't hear anything, don't come. Uh, you can come in. Perfect. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's the other thing. Knock. What is, it? Like what we is have, this behavior? It's like we about? now have a knocking policy in this house. Or like like I say, this could be solved. But hang on a minute. Do you not... So, like, I have a room mm-hmm. at my mother's house. Mm-hmm. I knock. I don't just barge in and be like, sorry! Like, you know, go in. No. When my mom, even though it's her house, mm-hmm. when I'm in there, she knocks on the door, and I'll say, one sec, or like, yeah, what's up? Yeah. And she'll poke her head in. She's not just opening the door, flinging it open, yeah. like... Like that is you, there's always like a not, even, even if you come, there's a knocking policy and for the bathroom, as far as I'm concerned, oh yeah always a knock policy. Mm -hmm. Like, like the bathroom at my parents' house doesn't have a lock on it. Okay. Yeah. So it's a knock policy. Cause it's an, it's like, it's an older house. Like, and so it is a knock policy like ever. And, but like this could be solved by literally just being like, all right, because this has happened a couple of times. Just knock. And I, and I, and like, you know, my trauma is, is preventing me from locking the door. So we're going to create a do not disturb sign or like an occupied sign. Yeah, whatever. Hanging on the door but handle. also knock. Hand, hanging on the door handle and we'll be good. Yeah. This could be solved. Instead, we're reverting to this. However, I do think it's very funny. Like, like. Oh, I think doing it's like, funny. Doing like handstands and stuff when they walk in. Like that's, so that's, that's, that's so great. So here's my step process. Okay. Here. Stop walking in your, your, sis, your daughter-in-law. It's not because I want to know. I want to know what the what the what the mentality is yeah. behind that. Number two, address it with her. Yeah. Say hey, knock if you see the door mm-hmm. closed because nobody's peeing with the door open. That's not a thing, either, right? I mean, at least girls aren't. Uh, certainly not. And if your mother in law is in the house, like, there's an extra level of decorum. E- yeah. Have some respect. Yeah. Here, like in our house at home, my grandfather lives with us. You're not peeing with the door open. Michael, yeah. close the door. Matt has never been a problem because he's, like, the most gentlemanly person on the planet. But, like, have a level of decorum. Set, but knock. 
Like, this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Then you address it. If she still is doing it and she's not knocking, then you go to your husband and say, Honey, this is what's happening. I'm uncomfortable. You and I know about the thing. I've asked her to knock. She's not knocking. Mm-hmm. Can you please address it with her? I understand this difficult when, like, mothers get involved, but has has this fella never heard of happy wife, happy life? Clearly not. What are we doing to our beautiful queens? And on that note, I think... I would like to urge you to donate to Jumpstart, our charity of choice. Jumpstart helps economically disadvantaged kids play team sports, which is a cause that's very near and dear to Rachel and I's hearts. Uh, All the links will be in the description of this episode. Uh, And if you can, we would very much encourage you to donate. Donate to Jumpstart. Um, All right. Well, that is the episode. Uh, We will be back next week. And until then, hope you have a great time.